we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how interaction or effect modification gets included in a logistic regression model and what exactly that would mean. And again, our goal here is to focus on the concepts, not the calculations. So I will show some of the calculations and, and how we get um, to an endpoint, but I don't want you to, to focus your attention on how those calculations are done. I want you to focus on what does it mean if there's effect modification? What are the interpretations and what does that mean in kind of real life in the big picture? Just a reminder that the kind of implication of effect modification, so what does it mean if there's effect modification? It's the same as it was in multiple linear regression. Okay, the concept is the same. The only thing changing here is we're looking at categorical yes-no type outcome variable rather than a numeric one. Earlier in our first meeting, we talked about effect modification. Earlier in this set of videos, we recapped effect modification. So the understanding that you built there, it completely transfers over to here. If we're looking at what effect does x1 have on y, and then if this variable x2, some other variable, modifies the effect that x1 has on y, we'd say that x1 and x2 interact. And okay, that the effect that x1 has on y changes depending on the value of x2. If this is the case, right, if there is effect modification, then the odds ratio must be specific to values of that x2 variable. So let's take a look at the Fiji fertility data and talk about what we mean um, rather than using x1 and x2 and being so generic let's get into some uh, actual concepts. Let's take a moment to think about the Fiji fertility data and some of the variables we have. So our x1, our variable of interest, is the level of education. Our outcome is whether or not they're using contraceptives. And do you think it's reasonable to hypothesize or assume that this variable wanting more children, yes or no, that it may modify the effect of education. So what this would mean is that if it was an effect modifier, the effect that education has on contraceptive use changes whether or not, depending on whether or not they want more children. In other words, we'd have to say, here's the effect of education on contraceptive use when they want more kids. Here's the effect of education on contraceptive use when they do not want more kids. If we think that the effect of education changes depending on whether or not they want more kids, that's effect modification. Okay, that would also mean that we need to report two separate odds ratios. What's the odds ratio for education when they want more kids? What's the odds ratio when they do not? You can also think of would it make sense conceptually that the effect of education might change depending on their age category. In our slides and our discussion, we're just going to focus on that wanting more children variable. If we fit a model that included this effect modification term, allowing the effect of education to change depending on whether or not they wanted more children. What that essentially would involve would be including another term in the model that's the education times the wanting more. And again, we're not going to be working with these formulas. You're not going to be asked to calculate these by hand. So focus on the concepts of the discussion, not on the calculation. But again, this would assume that the effect that education has on contraceptive use changes or it depends on whether or not they want to have more kids. If this was the case, um, and we won't get into this, but this can be tested statistically to check is the effect modification statistically significant. So you want it to be statistically significant and you want it to make sense conceptually. You want it to make sense that the effect education has on contraceptive use might be different depending on if they want more kids or not. If that was the case, and they said it, we would find it is statistically significant if we carried out that test, then we'd have to calculate two odds ratios. There'd be an odds ratio for education when they want more children, and that would work out to be 1.91, and we'd have an odds ratio for education when they do not want more children, and that odds ratio would come out to be 1.03. The interpretation of these is that if they want to have more children, Right, so that first odds ratio, if they say they want to have more children, the odds of a woman of high education using contraceptives are about 90% higher than the odds of a woman of low education. Or for the sake of making that sentence a bit easier, let's suppose that odds ratio of 1.91 was about 2. If a woman says they want to have more children, odds of using contraceptives 
for high education are about double the odds of low education. And so if they want more kids, educated people are using contraceptives about twice as often. Now, if they say they do not want more children, the odds ratio is 1.03. There are the odds of using contraceptives for someone of high education are 3% higher than someone of low education. That odds ratio roughly comes out to 1, and if you remember learning about odds ratios, right, an odds ratio of 1 means there's not an association. Okay, so in other words, here what we're saying is when they do not want to have more children, education doesn't really seem to have an effect on whether or not they're using contraceptives. If they want to have more children, then women of high education are using contraceptives almost twice as often. What exactly does, uh, does that mean? What's going on here? Okay, so this effect modification, it is statistically significant. Um, they kind of, here there's the recap of the odds ratios and the statements we just made. And we might think about why are we seeing this show up? So I can tell you when I first um, found this data and ran through analysis, I got, I got to this endpoint and I worried that I'd done something wrong. What I had thought was, if they want to have more children, they're not using contraceptives. And if they do not want to have more children, then educated would be using it more often. In other words, I thought those odds ratios should actually flip and be the other way. Um, so I thought maybe I'd made a mistake. And then as I spent time thinking about it, I kind of came up with a hypothesis of why, why this might be showing up. I'm going to suggest that you take a moment to think about why, why are the numbers showing up this way? What do you think might be going on? And then I'll give you my, um, my hypothesis or my interpretation of what I think is going on here. Okay, so let me get to my thoughts here. So I said, once I took time to sit and think about it, I thought, well, does someone need to have a high level of education to know that contraceptives prevent babies? Probably not. High education, low education, they probably all know that contraceptives can help prevent you know, unwanted pregnancies. That's why we're seeing the odds ratio of 1.03 when more children are not desired. If they don't want to have more kids, they're probably using contraceptives in the same way. What happens when they do want to have more kids? When they do want to have more kids, we're seeing that odds ratio is 1.91. Right? Or if they want to have more kids, educated, highly educated are using contraceptives much more than low educated. And the reason I hypothesize we're seeing this is there's probably a lot of family planning going on. Those who have a higher education, if they want to have more kids, they might still be using contraceptives trying to control when they have those kids, okay, or how many they end up having. It's important to, to note um, a survey question that asks, do you want more children, yes or no, doesn't necessarily mean, are you trying to have children right now? So you can imagine there might be some people who say, yes, they want to have more children, but they might not want them right now. They might want to wait a few years. Someone might have just had a child, have an infant, and they'd like to have another kid at some point, but maybe they want to wait a few years and, and space them out. So that was my hypothesis on why we're seeing this. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.